My name is Ashley, and this is Let's Talk Dispatch. I do. <laughs> You're gonna do it. Do it really well. And I believe the world needs more dispatchers. Around in the mud, blood, and beer. Years that I'm not working Fourth of July. Fourth of July. <laughs> hey, community right now is right. What about community mm-hmm. dispatch? So on this show, with the help of my guests, we will educate, empower, and support the heroes behind the headset. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here on Let's Talk Dispatch with me, Ashley, the Raspy Dispatcher. Hopefully everyone's staying warm. Uh, We're definitely getting into the rainy, cold weather here, at least in the Bay Area, um, which honestly is my favorite time of year. Though I have to say, as a dispatcher, last year, the rainy season was wild. Like the Bay is just worked were too sensitive. The trees were falling. They they could not deal with how much rain we had last year, which made for very long work days. But on days off, you know, I'm all for it. A little hot cocoa, you know, on the couch, got the Christmas tree going. Like it's 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 a whole vibe. So I hope you are staying dry. Hopefully your shift is not affected too terribly by the weather and all of that is going well. My guest today is a retired public safety dispatcher who wants to share their story to let people know they're not alone. And they spent six years in Army communications and the military police, and then 28 years as a law enforcement dispatcher. And we started at the same agency. So it's going to be a wonderful chat with my guest today, Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I know. So I mentioned to them that you and me, we kind of, we're like family, you know? Yeah. We, we came from the same roots there, Sacramento exactly. Police Department. <laughs> yes. Best well, place how, to go. I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get into public safety? Um, well, it, uh, back in 1986, I went into the Army. Uh, California National Guard as a communication specialist and then proceeded to become military police. And so it's a weekend warrior kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. I tried to base my civilian career as to what I was doing in the Army. So I applied Mm -hmm. for like Sacramento Sheriff and all, all sorts of law enforcement. And then I saw the job for a dispatcher and I went and applied for it. And Oh my God! They hired me. <laughs> they they hired me too. It's really it's really all questionable if you actually think about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but oh my gosh, they were a great agency to work for to get your start at. It really mm-hmm. was. But I was only there for eleven months, and they released me on on probation because I wasn't quite fast enough for them. And you mm-hmm. understand that. That's a, yeah. it's a crazy busy agency. Mm-hmm. So then I got hired up in El Dorado and I've been, was there ever since. Awesome. So, so, so cool. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's so crazy, like how different the vibes are at different agencies, you know what I mean? And like what you need to be really, really good at, at a certain agency, maybe compared to a different one. Right. Just because of the call volume, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Our, um, in El Dorado, our busiest day was the slowest day that SAC PD would have. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can deal with this. This is, you know, it's kind of chill. And I kind of grew with the, with the agency mm-hmm. too. You yeah. Know? So and so, go ahead. Oh, oh yeah. We started out uh, dispatching for three different agencies, fire, uh, Placerville police and El Dorado County Sheriff's office. And then as we kind of grew up, we lost fire to Cal Fire because they did that whole Mm. fire thing in the transfer over um, in the uh, rural counties of California. Mm -hmm. And then we lost Placerville PD because they got a grant to have their own dispatch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. our call volume never changed. Yeah, yeah, it was so calling. <laughs> Actually, got worse. <laughs> so, when you were applying for the role as a dispatcher and you know trying to figure out where to land in this public safety world, did you have an idea of what dispatching looked like in, in the civilian realm from your Absolutely experience? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, I mean, it's it's what could go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> People listening at work are shutting this thing off right now. I They're like, know. no. <laughs> Here, we don't want to miss you. <laughs> Let's talk about what can go wrong, Deborah. What oh. can go wrong? <laughs> oh my gosh, the list is long and distinguished. <laughs> For sure. For there, sure. There's a reason why they say graveyard makes policy. <laughs> Yard makes policy. I like that. <laughs> My gosh. So what what was it like for you in the beginning? I know you said, you know, Sac PD was real high volume and it was a, it was kind of a struggle there getting to the the pace um that they needed you to be at. Yeah. But as you shifted, um, and as you learned from a different agency, different trainers, different, you know, what was that like for you in the beginning? Oh my gosh. So at SAC PD, um, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but when we were on radio and you weren't getting it right mm -hmm. then, you were kind of slow, you were freezing up, whatever, your trainer would yank your chair <laughs> back and get in there. Lie on it. <laughs> and <Excuse> me. <laughs> So I got, you know, I was used to that. So I go up to El Dorado and I'm kind of, I'm on the busy channel. I'm kind of freezing up. I'm not catching up. And I just back my chair up and my trainer goes, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, aren't you going to take over? And she goes, oh, hell no. Get in there and do it. And so, yeah, that, you know, throwing me to the wolves, but there you go. I did it. That's funny. I remember, um, I remember, I remember my trainer, I, I was, I was a total poo magnet, like in my radio training. <laughs> I mean, I could have three beepers on my channel. I could have like five priority one calls pending. Oh it was just like, Sergeant, you copy like the city's on fire copy. <laughs> like, you know, like there's nothing you can do, but wait. And I remember one day, like things were just popping off and i like looked at my trainer and she looked at me she goes just keep typing and i just kept exactly typing. that's all you can do sometimes <laughs> is just keep typing because oh it my gosh get yeah so hectic you know yeah but you know i mean that's how you learn is mm -hmm. you know and you make those mistakes and but you have your trainer there to to help you when you fall so that's exactly. always good you know, it's a lot of grace that has to be given on like both sides of the radio, right? You know, like, oh, yes. you know, we have to train our replacements, you know, we have to train the people. And I think sometimes, you know, officers and dispatchers, you know, we can little get a like, oh, like, you know, they're not getting it or they're like this or that or that. And it's like, well, we've all been there. We've all like yes. had the moment where the trainer finally goes, okay, you could talk on the radio and you're like, 10 four and you're just like they're just excited you're like yeah i just 10 four them like they're they hear they heard me that was me you know well i luckily i had no um because i had been in the military i talked on the radio i was mm -hmm. in communications i did mm -hmm. that um my fear was confusing and which i did quite often confusing the phonetics Oh, so yes, yes, you yes. had the military phonetics and you had law enforcement phonetics, mm. California law enforcement phonetics. When you would get these officers that would come in, the new ones, and and they would give their phonetics in the military and everybody mm -hmm. in the room would be thrown off but me. And I was like, <laughs> OK, we're just going to go along. And I'd say, oh, he's brand new. <laughs> that is one of the things that I remember yelling at one of my like academy trainers is like who's ida why are we why are we using ida i just feel like we could use a better it could be it, we could change it it could be <laughs> they wouldn't let me change it they're like it's ida i'm like i don't know who that is oh my and gosh I always yeah get that one on the test and i don't like that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was yeah it was it's, it's like learning a brand new language it really yeah. is Gosh, it, it so is. And like, don't even get started on like 10 codes and nine codes. And oh I don't know, gosh. was SAC still doing nine codes when you were there? Back um, in the at, day? At SAC PD, yes, nine codes. Yeah. And then did and, you go to El Dorado and they were like, we're 10 code here. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we go to, well, and I had a, a stint as a, 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 in a security company in between uh -huh. the two. 
so okay. that I'd have a job. And that's where I kind of learned 10 code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like, okay, now, yeah. But yeah, that was hard to get rid of the nine code after you yeah. learned it already. You know, it's the one thing, the one gift that keeps giving from Sacramento Police Department is that <laughs> yes, nine it code. Does. Well, and when I started listening to your podcast, um, you had mentioned that nine code, and I went, wait a minute. <laughs> I know where you work. <laughs> <laughs> it's so specific. I think Sack and Oakland are the only people. Oh who my gosh. Do nine code. And it's just like, why? Why? <laughs> exactly. What that there's no rhyme or reason to it. So, so back yeah. in the day was like, I'm gonna just make up our own thing. We're just gonna be unique. It's gonna be <laughs> and now it's 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 harming us here. Yes, here yes it's <laughs> trauma. My first trauma. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> do you remember? Remember any of your first calls or? Oh my gosh, my there? very first 911 call was uh, a mother who had found her daughter committed suicide in the bathroom. Oh my gosh, it's tough for a yeah. first call. First 911 oh. call, yeah. Mash. And were you guys just doing? Um, were you just doing police or were you doing medical at that time? Uh, so SAC. Um, we were just, um, so it was just the call takers. So mm -hmm. when we were there, we had, you had the law side and you had the fire side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, when we did our call taking, if it required medical, we transferred over to the fire side and they would do all the EMD mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember you guys, you, I guess you lost fire. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like the city hall building or the the police building, fire and law are still there, like where where you go do records reports and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, Record reports. They share that building, uh, but police has their own dispatch center, like off yeah. 65th. Yeah, yeah, we were over on Burkut, on yeah, the, the river in this tiny little building with all fifty of us sitting in there. <laughs> I, I believe I heard there was carpet walls at that. Uh, that yes. <laughs> yes. And the vacuum plugged into the floor. So you didn't have that machinery sound. You just got this whoosh. So it was really quiet when the guy came in in the middle of the night to vacuum the floors. It was kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of carpeted on the ceiling. And then our, our TDY was a separate phone at the back of the room. Oh, um gosh. Uh, yeah, it was, it was quite, and I, I had been, I did go to the new one that you guys had, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, cause you were at the new center over there off mm -hmm. of 65th. And, yeah. um, um, so I went there for, uh, train the trainer. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in like 2012, I think it was. Yeah. And, uh, so I got to see the new building, which was really cool. How fun. How, how freaking cool. I love it. Um, so when you took that call, I mean, that's a tough, that's a tough, that was, call. That you was know tough. what I mean? I think, and I think that's one of the harder, um, it's one of the harder calls to take, but I think it's also one of the harder calls as a medical dispatcher to, uh, work through because you're just trying to get this distraught person, you know, like to do something. Right. You know, and I think that's just so challenging, you know, like let alone to hear to hear the hear the person. I mean, it's heavy. Well, and and a mother's wail that her child has died is just yeah. heart wrenching. And it, it wasn't, really you know, I had another one years later back in El Dorado and um one of our frequent flyer crazy people, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, he him. just he just passed away and and listening i could it took me five minutes to get his mother calmed down to even get a word out of her yeah to figure out what was going on i knew which house it was i mean you know it's a it's, you're like oh that's I, jimmy's house we know that right yes, yeah. right, yeah. right and so it's like what's going on and finally you hear her what she said and it's like oh my god so yeah just that wailing though from a mom is so yeah. heart wrenching. Yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine. It's just, you know, it's it. We talk about you know um, these calls, which they're they're kind of the 
the last process of like a, a long-term problem, right? Like you right. Know, folks who are choosing to complete suicide and, you know, going to that, that level. Um, you know, we talk about self-care, we talk about mental health okay. um, as dispatchers, you know, we hear these things, we witness them. We witness like the extreme, like funny, like they're having this, it's like a, a, a good reaction. Then we hear the extreme, like really volatile, angry, you know, we get all these oh, yeah. spectrums of the mental health, you know, uh, world. And then we, we take it on the flip side. It's like, well, how are we helping ourselves? You know, exactly. Like, Exactly. So we can continue to help these people. And what are right. your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I went. So, you know, you go along and you have those calls and it just builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up. And then um, my first officer involved shooting. I didn't know if, if my deputy was alive or dead until the next day. So mm -hmm. I'm going home after my shift in tears because I don't know what's going on. Nobody's telling me what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your manager is saying, just suck it up and come back tomorrow. Yeah. You know, what, what are you going to do? So, you know, we got all this stuff going on and I thought I was doing really well. And then um, long about, oh, 2015, I went in for open heart surgery wow. uh, to fix uh, a heart defect. Mm -hmm. And, um, along with that, six months later, I went into therapy because mm -hmm. my coworkers were saying something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. We need to get you fixed. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started therapy and realized that how much trauma I had, had been victim to my mm -hmm. whole career. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you kind of go along and go along and luckily I got into a, um, a depression support group mm -hmm. and had it every week, which was great. Yeah. You know, and that, that helped. And I was able to, you know, kind of vent out things yeah. for a couple of years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need to. And it's, I don't know if we all realize it or we need to realize a little, little more myself included is just how like sneak, how sneaky it can be right like it's oh like, my gosh yeah you don't really feel it you don't really notice it and then all of a sudden it's, it's like oh oh snap like you know <laughs> i i thought i was good you know i, yeah. I didn't realize that these things were piling up and got me feeling a type of way um so it's okay Absolutely. to jump in and get maintenance like before you even feel like well and you, need and, it. you know well. it's just having that really, I think, lengthened my career a little longer than yeah. had I not. I think I, I would have gone out in 2015 mm -hmm. had things kept going the way they were. But yeah. had I, I had some great coworkers that, you know, basically did an intervention and said, hey, get help. Yeah, we don't want to lose you. <laughs> yeah, props, to, props to them because, you know, I yeah. think sometimes, you know, we can get a little um afraid of right like having hard oh, conversations yeah. or like awkward conversations or assume feeling like you're assuming something that may not be you know but sometimes you you gotta look out for your people and you gotta just oh kinda... absolutely you know i would much rather have somebody taking care of themselves you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. getting that help they need so that they can help others Rather than having that person that says, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, mm -hmm. and then absolutely collapsing when they get uh, triggered on a 911 call. Yeah. And, I, and, and triggers are so, they change, right? Yes. Like they just, and you just, you never know what what's going to develop. You know, I think one of the um, dispatchers at my first agency, like, poked their head into our little training room. And they would just come in and talk to us. And one of the things they said is like, you know, kid call kid calls never bothered me until oh, I was a yeah. parent. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And then so now you it's a trigger for you now. Whereas before, when you was out here in the streets walling out, you're like, ah, kid calls, whatever. But now that you have a family, you have children, like those calls oh. are gonna weigh heavier. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And and worse when you're when you become a grandparent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I can't even imagine. I tell well, and we, you know, we were sheriff coroner. So mm-hmm. we dealt mm-hmm. with all of that. You know, mm-hmm. we would send the deputies out to deal with it. And, you know, it um it it really it would hit home. I you know there were many times I went home and hugged my kids or my, you know, um years later my grandkids you know it's like come here i got i gotta have a hug you know or i text my daughter and say i need a picture (laughs) (laughs) you need to take your kids (laughs) <laughs> well, I tell my brother, I was like, you you can't procreate anymore. It's really bringing down my inheritance. There's oh, there you go. Um, I, I think three is <laughs> enough. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Well, I have uh, I have 10 grandchildren Woo! reaching in age from, uh, I think the oldest one just turned 19 uh, mm-hmm. to a year and a half. So I got a big span. I've got, I have one child of my own and four stepchildren. So Aww. yeah, so I got, and, and it's great. I love it. <laughs> Are we going to get that 19 year old into dispatching or what? Oh no, she, she joined the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she's not too far off from grandma there, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. It's oh, great. Man. So do you think your military experience really helped you like adapt to the world of first responder? Like, Oh yes. Yes. Cause mm-hmm. you're going from pa- military to what do they call it? Paramilitary. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's yeah, kind of, yeah. it's, you still have that structure mm-hmm. and, and I think being in, in the army really helped with that. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely, I can definitely see that. I think it's weird it takes a little getting used to coming from like a everyday civilian kind of ask um, job history going mm. into um, a situation where you really do have this like chain of command right. type of idea. Um, and I think that could be a hard transition for folks who are trying to get into this line of work um, because you really got to do, you really got to respect that chain of command a bit because no one at the top is going to worry about your plight until you like go to the go through the oh yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that's what you do right the supervisor not doing it yeah talk to you know like you gotta kind of respect yeah. that line of line of uh communication absolutely mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's a different it's it's a different world yeah most definitely. for sure for sure but you know the thing that i i do enjoy about being a dispatcher at at this time um is a the technology that we have available oh my gosh um, yes that what what would you say is like the the if you could if you could do your job right now all over again with the tech that's available now like what's the one thing that you would have wanted like on your first day um, oh my gosh to well, be available so when i so I call 911 a lot. <laughs> Just say it. I go on walks and I find strange things in my neighborhood. So um, this last one, when I called and it wasn't, I just called non-emergency because it was a stolen vehicle that I came across. I, it's just Deborah, are you out there hot wiring cars? I, I am. Oh my God. But they were able to text me. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, SAC SO has, um, they're, they're able to text you information. So they texted me a couple of phone numbers that I needed to call. Um, yeah, it was amazing. I'm like, this is fantastic. What is this? I've only been gone for four years. What the heck? <laughs> it It's, uh, you know, when I started out, um, we were on the, the green screens, I, we had two monitors mm. with mm-hmm. the, I call them green screen. So the DOS. Um, oh yeah. The DOS. Mm. Yeah. So we had that and we had, you know, one had was our status monitor. One was our call entry screen mm. and we kind of grew from that. We went, you know, in 2000, we got the, the uh, desktop computers mm. um, and just seeing all of the, technology it's amazing just um you know rapid sos uh, mm. phase one phase two 911 cell phone 
locations. I mean, we could we did search and rescue in El Dorado, and somebody could call nine one one, and we could find out where they were at. It was yeah. just a matter of getting to them. Yeah, you know, just yeah. amazing technology where they where they were putting them on the map so we could see it. And mm -hmm. you know, um, text to nine one one. I guess some agencies have video, mm -hmm. which is yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. You know, not that I would want to see that per <laughs> or that person to see who I am, but you know, just that the technology. I mean, it's just. I mean, you know, soon we're just going to be beaming the officers over to where they need to oh, be no. at. <laughs> <laughs> I say all the time when someone calls and they call like two minutes after their original oh, yeah. call, I'm like, we can't teleport. We can't teleport oh, just yet. Like, we're, yeah. just, we're working on it. <laughs> we're trying. But. but I mean, it's just amazing just to sit back now that I'm retired and look at how things have changed mm. and and for the good. As yeah. far as the technology is concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I say all the time that I doing the job back then with the lack of technology versus doing it now. Oh, like, oh, I don't know. Oh. I it. Well, <laughs> and not. even, and even when I started the, com they had to take the computers down once a month to do a backup. So we went on cards oh, once no. a month. <laughs> So I got my, my, uh, my practice with that too. Oh, I've successfully avoided manual, manual oh, mode my in gosh. my career, uh, thus far and <laughs> trying to keep that, <laughs> keep that going. I'm trying to, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm it, on manual mode. We'll see if it happens, but. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was quite amazing. Luckily I was in El Dorado when that happened and not SAC because holy moly, I couldn't imagine. Sometimes doing that that, like you'll walk into SAC and they'll have like a note on the door. That's like manual mode. And you're like, I'm leaving. I'm not even. I'm out. In. I'm out. <laughs> Uh, how long I'm will sick. it take for them to notice <laughs> you know i lived like right around the corner from the oh my gosh there. i can i can throw a rock at like the the tower and i'm oh. like they'll come get me if if i don't show up they're gonna, just dry, <laughs> they're just gonna dry right around that corner and come get me <laughs> there you go <laughs> luckily i lived still lived in sack so it was yeah. an hour for them to come get me if they needed me <laughs> a lot more work <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny Oh, man. But another thing that changed, I think, so in our industry really as a whole, um, from patrol to our centers, is the idea that mental health is a thing. You know, yes. like as you said, Absolutely. back in the day, like the idea of not knowing if my officer is okay and someone just telling me to go home. Yeah. Like, what? Like, I could never. Like, well, today. And it's uh, today, oh my gosh! So it was night and day. So the, the um, my last critical incident, which was the one that that sent me into retirement, mm -hmm. um, I had an officer shot and killed on my channel, gosh. and um, everything that I went because I went to uh, uh, what do they call it, CISM, Critical mm -hmm. Incident Stress Management, a couple yeah. years prior. Mm -hmm. to so this was in 2019 when my incident happened and um everything happened just almost like textbook from what i was trained i mean mm -hmm. you know that night we had a a small um de-escalation meeting mm -hmm. um two days later we had you know a, a group session with with a therapist and mm -hmm. um i even because i had already been in mental health care um, I made sure to call an emergency um, appointment for my therapist. Mm -hmm. And then after my appointment with the therapist, my uh, one of my friends who's also peer support, she worked at Elk Grove PD and she was right by where I went to. And mm -hmm. so I called her up and we spent two hours sitting out back at Elk Grove PD talking. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I just, I, seeing the difference though and how we were treated mm -hmm. as as dispatchers. Yeah. Um, and given that time off and given as much time as we needed off mm -hmm. to take care of our mental health was so much different than, than when I started, when I started, it was just, yeah, just go, you know, be back tomorrow. See you then, yeah. you know, <laughs> yes. and you're like, what the heck? 
Yeah, I couldn't imagine, you know, I, we, we had an officer involved, um, shooting and death and well, I was at SAC PD and. Oh, that know, was, um, Tara, wasn't it? Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we were just sitting on the channel like all night, just like listening to shots being popped off. And like, oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine like my st my supervisor being like, "All right, clock out. We'll uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, you know what happened <laughs> after? Like what? I just, <laughs> I, yeah, it's I just, just crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, it's something that we've all got to look at though, because we're taking more, we're going through more trauma as dispatchers on a regular than a lot of the officers are mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we may have two or three traumatic incidents a night during our shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, you pick up that 911 call and you've got somebody actively stabbing someone. You can hear the screaming in the background or you're picking up that 911 call and somebody's saying, my brother just shot my dad. Uh, you're picking up that night, but you're going up and down too, because you have those other calls mm -hmm. that are just what we would consider routine or yeah. not stressful. Mm -hmm. You know, the three-year-old playing on the phone or the, the alarm company calling and you're putting in that thing. So we're doing a lot of up and down, but we don't have a lot of downtime to, to process all of this information and to heal from that information, that yeah, and I think that is a significant difference between a patrol and dispatch. And it's not to say like one one. It's not one trauma Olympics, right? We're not trying. Oh yeah, no, there's no comparison. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's 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 both trauma. It's both this. It's it's both equally traumatic. But the difference is, is that my I'll send my officer to a stabbing, and they're going to be on that call for eight out of the twelve hour shift one right. call, you know? Um, but like you said, I, t I send that off to that stabbing and now I'm answering another DV. I'm answering, you know, a uh, suicide attempt. I'm answering, you know, so I'm working through, as you said, multiple critical incidents where our officers um, have the fortune and misfortune to have to respond out to these scenes Mm -hmm. but they're only sitting on that call for an extended period of time, right, right. you know? Um, and, so and, you know, but I, I don't want to discredit their trauma because mm -hmm. they are getting, they're getting it in their face. Smell it. Look at it. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> they have right. a lot of, you know, the visual, the hearing, mm -hmm. the, the, they're, they're getting all their senses where we're just getting, we're listening to it. Mm -hmm. And we're not able to do anything about it yeah. other than get deputies on the way or get officers or send fire or, or whichever. And we're not allowed to process that. Yeah. And so, you know, getting a therapist and getting yourself taken care of. And, you know, I was on antidepressants for years, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't mean I was crazy. It just, kept me at a level that I wasn't crazy. We don't need a little help, you know? <laughs> we don't want Deborah calling you, you know, be the well, regular caller after. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like you don't want your dispatcher being that bubbling pile of goo on the floor because, yeah. you know, they can't handle what's going on, yeah. you know, and we do what we got to do. And then, you know, there's those that self-medicate. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of that going around, you know, it's not like in the olden days when we, you know, dispatchers lived on cigarettes and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to someone who was like, yeah, they, they were smoking in, in this. Oh my gosh. I first started yep. like, what? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not with those carpet walls now. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, or, or going out to the, uh, what was the, uh, SAC PD was uh, the zebra club at seven oh in the morning. <laughs> uh, dispatchers and cops, you know, choir practice at the zebra club. I, and, I do you know, remember <laughs> a memory unlocked. This is how 911 calls work. I do remember like seven in the morning, maybe, maybe eight in the morning, like a pocket doll, an open line. And I could hear this guy ordering a beer and it was like <laughs> Monday, 8am. And I'm just like, you know what, man, 
Like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you need it, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we definitely don't want to get into a situation where we are self-medicating and we are right. bottling all of our feelings up, you know, like therapy is needed. It's, it's a good, it's a tool, you know, it's yeah. not a, cool. it's not going to fix all of our problems. It's, it's just helping us manage them, you know? Yes. yes. And giving us the tools to, to do our job. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking those, uh, like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kaiser, mm -hmm. oh, Northern very. California, <laughs> <laughs> but they had doing their mental health department, they do classes. So mm -hmm. classes on depression, classes on anxiety, classes on uh, workplace stress. Mm -hmm. And I was taking all of these classes. I still have all the, the material and mm -hmm. getting all those and using them to deal with callers too mm -hmm. was awesome. You know, yeah. if we could get dispatchers to take mental health classes just to help mm -hmm. do their job, yeah, it would be great. Yeah. And one thing I think that we need to be aware of and um, intentional with in our centers is when we're, you know, dispatchers, we're a little, we're a little colorful. We're, we're a little flavorful <laughs> when you have some dark humor and, you know, dark some humor and potty mouth, <laughs> right? We, we pull right from the hips sometimes. Um, and just say, I know me, like my goer is like, Ash is probably the worst of us all. You know, sometimes I just say what comes off the top of my head, but when we're talking about mental health and we're talking about tough calls and we're talking about seeking services, we should really be aware of the language we're using and the things that we're saying, because if someone's on the verge of not going and, you know, getting help and then their coworker says like, ah, therapy, you don't need it. Or, you know, kind of makes oh, a dig, exactly. dig at, dig at the, the treatment or the process. It might prevent someone who needs it from going and trying it out, you know, exactly. So I think, yes. Like have fun at work, you know, where no one's going to change the sailor in the comm center, but when we <laughs> are speaking about these things, we do need to be aware that our, our words have power, right? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to shame someone just because they're feeling down just because yeah. they're not handling something the way you want it, them to handle it or the way you handle it. Mm -hmm everybody's different. We all have different responses and we all handle trauma and critical incidents differently. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we need to be aware of that and look out for our partners and, you know, somebody who's sitting in the corner with their back to the, to the room and they're crying at their desk. Maybe we should, you know, yeah, have a little grace and send them home or, get them some help, have them talk to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times chaplains are, are, e even though it, it has that stigma of being religious, a lot of people don't like talking to them, mm -hmm. but they're really good just to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're usually around. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's funny. You said another memory unlocked are the chaplains at SAC PD would always come into the comp center and just do like, they would always have chocolate. So oh, they, of course they knew they knew how to get us to at least say hi. They get yes. us some chocolate, and then we'd have like a little five minute conversation, or you know, longer if it if it served that person. But we did have chaplains who would who would show up and come around and oh yeah, you know, chocolate. <laughs> my my chaplain with the National Guard was actually our department chaplain in El Dorado when I first oh. started. Oh, so cool. I knew him. You know, we already had that relationship, which was good. Yeah. But, you know, just having somebody to talk to that isn't judgmental. Yeah. Really helps. It does. It does go a long freaking way. <laughs> really yeah. <does. laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, well, what do you think for, because I know when we're talking about, like, you know, the dispatcher crying at their desk and um, helping those individuals. And I know that oftentimes when we... Um, think about taking a mental health day, thinking about time off in this line of work, we could hesitate to do that because staffing, like if I call out, it ruins someone else's day. Like it's not like staffing a normal, um, a normal nine to five right. job. What would you say to someone who's having a hard time, you know, taking that time off or asking for that 
that um, those moments in regards to thinking of staffing and things of that nature. Take the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't question it. You uh -huh. know, if you are having a day and uh, like an example, I used to cry going to work, oh, yeah. cry coming home from work mm -hmm. and, and feeling guilty that I, I shouldn't take that time. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes it worse yeah. because you're forcing yourself to go in and you're not getting that help and you're not doing that self-care. And mm -hmm. it, I think it made it worse for me mm -hmm. and probably caused, <laughs> helped, helped in the, the perfect storm that was my last year there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Is that, it, is that exactly. form, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, take the time. Go go on a drive. I mean, it, I always tell people, take your vacations, too. You know, it's not just that sick day or anything like that, but take your vacations. Go mm -hmm. somewhere that is not law enforcement related. <laughs> Get out and do things. You know, a lot of agencies work like, uh, three days on, three days off, four days on, four days off, that type of schedule. Mm -hmm. You have a three-day weekend every weekend. Go do something. Get away. You know, drive through the mountains. Go to Tahoe. I, I mean, you know, just get out. Yeah. And do something. Yeah. And that unplugging does go a long way. And some of the best advice that I, I got when I first started, for those listening, it's my secret. This is my secret sauce is that that overtime you're taking always take half and pay half and half time. and comp now <laughs> i never did that i took it all in pay and yes, i kind of re regretted that, it <laughs> that's the little red devil on the shoulder right yeah. you're like ah oh, i need this bag i need this money but that time adds up so fast and you're gonna need it you're gonna want it yep and i know it's super easy to just take everything and pay uh, but let's be honest, we're not trying to get into that next tax bracket. They're just going to take it all from you anyways. Well, so let's just. <laughs> yeah, I had, I, had quite a, I had quite a sickly bank built up. I had over 500, but I was able, um, when I went out for my surgery, I was mm -hmm. able to do it all on uh, sick time. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's so nice. So it, it wasn't disability. It wasn't reduced pay. It was, yeah. yeah. Full yeah. time recover it and get, get that check. We need that too. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, on my last year, I used it to um, supplement because I was on workman's comp. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of supplemental stuff going out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't want to. But the vacation time, a lot of agencies have the separate, but mm -hmm. for those that have the, to, the uh, is it PTO? Yeah, we have straight PTO. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's your sick and your vacation mixed mm -hmm. together. And you got to, you know, you have to budget that a little bit different. You do. You do. It's, it's, that's a little where I think at SAC, we, we had a really cool thing at SAC. I think they got rid of it though. We had like holiday time. We had the sick time and then we had comp time. I think, I think that's how it went. Um, but yeah, taking taking part of it in, in time yeah. just to have, you know, no matter Absolutely. what your are. <laughs> and usually, yeah. usually there's a certain cap, right? So like say 100, right. 100 hours is your cap. Anything over, you're gonna have to take time because you're not don't don't want to lose. Yeah, it. with with El Dorado, you could bank as much as you want. You could have like yeah. you know a thousand hours of sick time, mm -hmm. but they only paid out so much when you retired. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know so you had to agency, use a lot of it. Yeah. This agency, they like, let you cash it out once a year oh, nice. you know, for the love folks who have like a lot, a lot of hours. So it's technically <laughs> a private savings bank, you know, like Christmas, if you really, Christmas you really, money, <laughs> yeah, if you really think about it, you know, all these, things. but I mean, it's just so many different ways that you're taking care of yourself is really yes. what it, what it comes down Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Um, when we talk about taking our time, taking our vacation, you know, um, it's easy. I posted a reel today um, 
basically like you show up for overtime and you're just like, what is you like, why am I here? You know? <laughs> and that's, that's advice I got too early on was like, do not overload yourself with overtime, especially the new folks who just fresh, fresh off of training. They're, they're big kids now. They're allowed oh to sign up for overtime. And my, I remember my shift lead. She was like, if I see you signing up for like 80 hours of overtime, I'm declining it. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Well, like, my, you know, when, when you get to be, you know, over 20 years in, you kind of let them do it here. <laughs> you guys go right ahead because I want my weekend. Right? Like, come on, come on. Don't you want to work? <laughs> you know, but making sure you're not working too much. You know, for me, I was exactly. trying to buy, buy my first big, big girl couch. Um, so I was taking some weird overtime, but oh my god, no, yeah. we, we got to practice that self care even when we're when we're chasing the money. So yep, yep, yep. <laughs> well, Deborah, as we wrap it up, you know, the last thing that I ask everyone who comes onto the show is, what advice would you give someone who's considering a career in dispatch? Go get yourself a therapist within the first year. Mm -hmm. go take your time find that person that you click with mm -hmm. and go see them you know every three months mm -hmm. every every six weeks because you're gonna learn those tools and you're gonna have that person so when when pardon the expression when the shit hits the fan yeah you will have somebody that you know you can go to to talk to mm -hmm and get help. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea getting a therapist in the first year. It makes so much like now, you know, it makes so much sense. And if someone told me that now, hopefully they're listening and taking it, taking it in. But like thinking back, like, I don't think anyone's said those specific, that specific advice. And it's just so simple and so true. Like, yeah. Let's be preventative. You know, we can't we can't be preventative a lot of times in well, this line of work. And you do preventative medicine for your physical mm -hmm. health. You know, exactly. there's a lot of us that that, you know, take medications to keep us moving along the way we're supposed to. And you know, <laughs> we go to the doctor on a regular basis. Yeah. Why aren't we going to see somebody for mental health also? And it should be and it should be across the board firefighters cops dispatchers um go in and get that mental health and have that established before you need it mm -hmm. and then you know maybe even talking to the you know the chiefs and the sheriffs get a psychologist on staff so that there's somebody there when mm -hmm. when they're needed mm -hmm. Such great advice, such great stories. Deborah, thank you so much for joining me, uh, for leading the way at Sacramento Police Department. Oh my gosh, you know, yeah. <laughs> my picture's still up there too. Hey, that's true. Oh, I, I gotta go. All the academies were. Yeah, all the academies. Like, oh my God, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Again, thank you so much. I've had a wonderful time chatting with oh, you. Thank you and for having me. This yeah. is great. Awesome. All right. I'll be right back with you. Okay. All right, everybody. That was another amazing episode here at Let's Talk Dispatch. Again, Deborah, thank you so much for coming onto the show, um, being so uh, transparent and vulnerable with your story. Um, your advice is so solid. And genuinely, anyone who is listening who's early in their career, late in their career, you know, just getting started. Uh, mental health is really a thing we should all be talking about. We should all be taking care of ourselves. And I really do love the advice that Deborah gave, which is get a therapist within that first year of doing any line of work that is first responder related. Um, and it does take a little time to find the right fit you know, with your therapist. So don't feel like you try one and it didn't work out, you know, do some shopping there, find a good fit and take care of yourself so we can continue to take care of everybody else. Thank you all. Like, subscribe, tell a friend. Till next time, stay raspy. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let's Talk Dispatch, a Raspy Dispatcher production. If you like the podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave a five-star review, and of course, tell a friend. 
If you want to be a guest, head to the raspydispatcher.com and check out our additional resources. Until next time, stay raspy, everybody.